relationship you faced and got through it. Uh-huh. See you in that blue dress, I knew it. It felt like I got shot by Cupid. What's up, y'all? I'm Ryan. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be going over the workflow that I used to make the clip that you saw in the intro there with the smiley face. This one. So by the end of this video, uh, you should understand a, a little how you can make something similar for, for yourself. So this is uh, in this workflow. It's basically a demonstration of some more capabilities it, it introduced to Comfy UI by my node suite. I will link this workflow and the GitHub project. You can have, the workflow will be included in the GitHub project um, and also the my Civit AI profile where it will you'll find the workflow packaged with all of the attendant assets that I used in this in this particular example, like the input video and the song and stuff. So you can try this workflow without doing too much additional setup work. Uh, if, you, if you'd like, take a second to uh, give me a star on the GitHub and follow me on, on Civit, like this video and subscribe to the channel for, uh, for more future stuff. Okay, so here, here she is. This is the, uh, the workflow. It, lo it, looks like, it looks like quite a bit and it, it is. It's, a, it's really several workflows sort of in one, uh, but we're gonna break it down piece by piece and into it, 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 it smaller chunks and it, it shouldn't be too bad to, to follow, hope, hopefully. But all of this was required to get that output. There's probably a smarter way to do it, but you know, I, I'm doing my best here. So let's start at the beginning. We load our audio and, you know, get some empty uh, masks and images and separate the audio into its component parts set up these features for later. We're not even using them all. I was just experimenting, but um, this is the flex feature system. It's the crowning jewel of my node suite. This is also included with the, the node suite and there's separate tutorials on audio manipulation and the flex feature system. I will link them in the description. But the beautiful thing is that instead of audio, we could swap it out for any feature source. So we take our audio from the song and put it into this new audio visualizer node. And this is the circular one, but there's also a line based one. And I'll be adding additional ones like with like gradients and stuff. Um, but the, the cool part is that it accepts this feature. So here we've got the drums and I've used this to set the feature threshold of 0.3. So any, any part of the feature that's below 0.3 is ignored. So like a lot of the hi-hats and other noise. Uh, oh, actually, here you go. You can compare the two. So this is the bare feature right here. And this is the one that we've just manipulated a little bit. So that's the feature input or just these lines. It's basically the kick and the snare. So we're using that as input and just like all the other flex nodes, the mask nodes, the video nodes, the image nodes, all those other ones, th this works the same way. We've got this optional feature input and it modulates this parameter here. So you can choose any of these. I've, it looks like I chose max frequency. So it's going to modulate max frequency, which you can find right here. So whenever there's a kick or a snare in, from that feature, it's going to modulate the max frequency. The beautiful thing is that you can use, like I said, features from any source, including motion, time, depth, MIDI, color, brightness, uh, more and more. The list goes on. So in addition to this feature param here, we get an extra one, uh, the audio feature param. And this is a, 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 it's a feature extracted directly from the audio in the inner workings of this node. So if you'd like, you can control two of these uh, param the parameters of this node. I am not using it here. <clears throat> Alrighty. So yeah, we just save that for later. So that's the audio visualizer. Now we got to set up our input images. So I've got this and we've calculated the, the number of frames here at the beginning from the, uh, from the length of the audio and that's we're loading that many frames right here. So I've got this, uh, the, the smiley face in the pool. I've pre done this in a different workflow and saved this. I've got the mask of just the ball 
you can use like segment anything to do that. Uh, I've, I've covered it in some other videos, so check those out. We get the mask every from color. Everything's everything that's white is becomes our mask, and we get the this variable we set earlier right here. Um, so we get our 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 audio visualizer, and we composite just the ball from this input image because of this mask. But we put the ball on top of the audio visualizer. So here's the output. And that is going to be the latent input for this first part of the workflow right here, or this third third part of the workflow, whatever. You'll see I've saved these uh, for later. The model, the clip, and the, the VAE, because we're going to reuse them, as well as the LoRa stack, actually. So <laughs> we'll use that. This as our latent input. This is the control net setup. And right when I, when I was recording this video, I realized that I had accidentally we're using line art here, but I had left depth as the control net model. And it's, I, I, here's the comparison. This is, this is without the control net. And this is with the accidental use of the depth control net here with the line art. So it, it looks like we need it. It looks like it was a happy mistake. Really interesting. So if you think about it, a, a line art, if you were to look at the output from this, it's just white white lines on a black image um, with, with varying opacity. So that's actually what a depth map is. It's just an image with like, basically like th the, the channel values are all the same in, in this particular case. So, I mean, this is technically, you could use it as a depth map. That's what we've done here. So there, there you go. Uh, learn something every day, I suppose. So here's the animate diff setup. I'm not going over that. Here's the uh, IP adapter. We're just you, giving it an attention mask of just the ball. And we sample it with a denoise value of 0.6 so that a bunch of the input image makes it through. And so here's the, the output. All right, moving on to this, this portion here, which is the same as what we just went through. There's one critical difference, which is that the input latent, instead of being this, instead of being this, we're just using the waveform, which remember it looks like this. So instead of the smiley, instead of the smiley face in the center, we've got just darkness, absolute darkness. Uh, same mistake with the control net, happy mistake, same everything. The only difference is the latent input again with a value of 0.6 so here is how different the uh the output is so you can still see the smiley face there that's because of the ip adapter but remember we we let with that denoise value of 0.6 we let 40 percent of the original image come through and in this case where the smiley face is is just that darkness that we talked about a second ago so that's part one part two of this workflow now we use this new, relatively new introduction to the node suite, which is latents as a target. Uh, so we take the we we take the latent from each sampler here. We've got the bright reg, the bright regular looking one and the dark one, and then we interpolate between the two of them. In this case, according to the vocals. So I took a vocal feature, I took a feature from the vocals up at the beginning. And here, uh, what have I done? I've like done some, manipulated some of these settings. It looks like mainly the rise detection threshold to sort of widen it out a little bit. So here's a, here's what the vocals look like. I was just trying to get the, the, the light of the ball to follow the vocals, which I ended up being able to do uh, relatively well. So spherical interpolation. So just according to the feature where it's like how much of each latent is coming through. And here is the result of that. And finally, <clears throat> we then take the latent, this interpolated latent between these two image, the, the two inputs, and we upscale that and sample it one last time. And it, this like smooths it, it enhances everything, smooths it out, some of that flicker. Um, 
you know, the relatively low denoise value. It's sort of a matter of taste. We sharpen it up a little bit, and here's the uh, here's the output. Sweet. So yeah, I mean that's that's kind of a lot. Let me know in the comments if I left anything out or you need me you need additional detail on anything. I'd be happy to provide it. Uh, I touched on just a lot of stuff here, left a lot out. So if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll do my best to uh, to answer them. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found this useful. I, I hope you can uh, manage to have a little bit of fun with it. Again, check out the GitHub page for more info on the rest of the Node Suite, other tutorials on this channel, and the Civic profile for other workflows. Give me a subscribe, dude. You know, like come come join us. We're freaking cooking, literally, constantly on this channel, having a lot of fun. So come join us. All right. Thanks for watching. I've been Ryan. Bye.